guys, welcome back to Tennessee Grill and Smoking. I'm Dustin, and today, guys, we are having a Labor Day feast. I just got through making my, my smoked cream jalapeno cheesy corn, and boy, my God, that was so good. I'm going to put a link to my video. I'll, I'll put the uh, tag right up here. Just click on it, check it out. You won't be disappointed. But now, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fix some great ribeyes. Another video I just got through making, I cut up his whole ribeye I got from Kroger's. It got a great deal on it. These are some of the steaks that came off of it. Absolutely great. So if you haven't saw that video, guys, check it out too. It's just showing you how to cut these up and the great looking steaks like this. What we did is we went ahead and had these steaks. We marinated them overnight in a marinade mix. It was uh, two cups of Worcestershire Steyer. I got a cup of uh, soy sauce, mixed in some honey in there, put some fresh rosemary in there, a little bit of Suckle Busters SPG, uh, and that's all it was. We mixed them up, put them in a bag, and they've been in the refrigerator overnight now. They've been soaking about, about 36 hours, actually. So we're going to go ahead and get them out, get them seasoned up, get them on the grill, and I'll show you what we do. All right, first thing we do, we're going to go ahead and get our grill fired up to high temperature. I set it all the way up on high. It's working on getting there. It's going to get about 450 to 500 degrees. And what I'm going to use on this one, I don't know if you can see this right here. I've got my, you've got a cast iron griddle that goes on top, but on the back side, it's good got the lines right there. Now I'm going to try to give me some, see if we can get some good searing lines with that. We're going to sear it on that. Then I'll take that out and I'll finish it off on the actual grill. But uh, go ahead and get our steaks prepared. Now since we marinated overnight, I don't need to use a lot of seasoning. Uh, I'm, I'll normally cover these with SPG and then come over top of it with some of the 1836, but I don't think it needs any SPG as it had some in the marinade. So what we're going to do is we're just going to get it a light coat of the 1836 Suckle Buster. That's just going to give us a nice little crust on these steaks, and that's what everybody likes on a good steak is a good crust. So, not too heavy, just a good coat. We're going to go ahead and coat both sides of them on here. Now, we're just going to press that down in here a little bit. Just flip them over. Boy, these are some good looking steaks, guys. Same thing on this side right here. We're just going to give it a nice coat. And honestly, after they've marinated so long, you really don't even have to do this. This is just how I like to do them because I really like the taste of this 1836 Suckle Buster Rub. That's the best one I've found so far, and I think it just adds so much to a steak or a ribeye. So, we got them rubbed down pretty good. We're just gonna pat them on there and we're gonna let them sit here for about 10 minutes while this grill heats up to temperature. Let the rub do its job, penetrate that meat, let those juices start flowing out. About that time, we'll stick one on the grill. I'm gonna go ahead and sear it real good and hopefully we'll have a good looking ribeye. All right, if you can see me through all the smoke here, we got her close to temperature. It's at 466 degrees. I've got the cast iron on there, so it's gonna be heated very evenly. And we're going to try to get a good, real, real good sear on this. So out of all these steaks, let's see which one we're going to do. I think we're going to do this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sear it for three minutes on each side. I've got it, my timer set for a minute and a half. After a minute and a half, I'm just going to do a quick little rotate to try to get those good little grill marks on there. And uh, let's hope everything turns out pretty good. So let's go ahead and throw this one on. Put this thing on just like that. Push down on it a little bit. Oh yeah. Woo, hot. Get my timer started. And here in about a minute and a half, we're gonna do a little rotate to it and then flip her and do the same thing to the other side. I'll see you in just a second. Alright, we're gonna go ahead and just give it a quick little quick little turn here. Close her back and go for another minute and a half. We should have some nice looking grill marks on that one. We're ready to flip it over, do the same thing to the other side, and then we'll cook her till we get to about an internal temperature, about 125 degrees, which shouldn't take long at all. We'll pull her out here, let her rest for about 10 minutes, and we'll eat her up. All right, guys, last one, that was it. We're gonna go ahead and take her out. Look at that. That right there smells so good. I wish you guys could smell that. It's amazing. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take the cast iron off. 
drop its temperature down to about 300 degrees, keep the lid raised up to help it cool down a little faster, and then we'll stick it right back on the grate. I'm also gonna close my searing box so it's just gonna be the heat on there. And we'll, let's see, turn it to about 300, about 325 is where we're gonna put it. And uh, we'll stick these back on here and pull them out when it gets time. I'll see you here in a minute. All right, so doing it six minutes, three minutes per side, brought me up to 117 degrees. So I'm just gonna stick this back on just for the remainder of it. Shouldn't take very long. We'll check it here in just a few minutes. Pull it out at, like I said, about 125 degrees where it's just the perfect medium rare. We'll sit there and we'll let it rest for about 10 minutes. We'll go ahead and cut into it and it should be ready. See you here in a minute. All right, it's just been in here just a couple of minutes. And turn our temperatures right at 126. We're gonna let it sit for about 10 minutes. We'll cut into it and we'll try it out. I'll see you here in a bit. All right guys, it's been about 10 minutes and I can't wait any longer. We're gonna go ahead and cut this bad boy open and check it out. Let's see here. Oh yeah. Oh look at that. That is a perfect medium rare steak. See how juicy that is. All right, we're gonna cut us off a bite here. All right. Mm. My gosh. That's a good ribeye, guys. That right there, that's got a great, uh, I don't know, that marinade definitely took in. You can taste the rosemary in there. You can taste that, you can definitely taste that Suckle Buster's 1836 rub. I think it makes any kind of cut of beef so much better. That Worcestershire sour sauce is always a good thing to put in the marinade. It's just got a distinct flavor to it. It tastes amazing. It's tender as all get out. And all in all, guys, it's a great steak. So, uh, yeah, check this, do this recipe right here. Just a quick little sear on each side. That crust is real good. That's exactly how I like it. Just got a little bit of a bite to it. And uh, you won't be disappointed. So, hey, I appreciate you watching. If uh, you liked what you saw, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe to me if you ain't already. And I will see you next time. Have a great day. And guys, as always, go to my description and click on the link to Greenback Designs Facebook page. Man, they do excellent work on all their products. And everything they do is handcrafted. And you can really tell by the quality of their products that they really care about everything they ship to their customers. So not only do they do just cutting boards, they'll make, they make candles, serving trays, signs, and much more. So please visit their page, show them some love, and be sure to tell them the Tennessee Grilling and Smoking sent you.